Alright, so welcome back to the channel. So it's been a while since my last Aeronautica video, but since school is done and I have more free time to make content, here we are. So you just got done with your jet engine training and you want to know what is the best choice for your first jet engine because you've only worried about multi-engines until now. So you click on the database, you search the words jet engine and out pops like 200 results. It may seem like you'll never find a jet engine that you will be satisfied with, but no worries, I have your back. Today I will showcase some of the best options in the game for your first jet engine playing, from the flashy business jets to the equally flashy, albeit in terms of speed, fighter jets. The important thing to understand about jet engines in the game is that there are many ways to play them that will net you a lot of money. Especially compared to multi-engines where the meta is just to find that playing with the largest capacity with the highest speed because everything else is garbage and should be ignored. With jet engines, there are a ton of ways to play the game while still getting tons of WP. You can island hop and chain jobs. You can do long haul still, now even longer since you have the extra range of jets, but you can also do things like PTS, recon, and supply drop. And the best part is that all of those jobs are competitive in terms of income. So just because you like glorified airshow jobs, doesn't mean you'll make less than the other guy who AFKs for 90% of the flight. Anyways, basically how this will work is that I'm gonna be showing you the best options for going from multi-engines to jet engines and even some multi-engine alternatives to save on the jet engine training costs. Let's begin. First off, with what is quite possibly one of the best bang for the buck airplanes in the entire game, we have the Embraer C-390. Looking at its stats, you're gonna notice a high speed of 533 knots, which is 50 knots faster than most jet engines, a very good service ceiling of 11 kilometers, lower is better by the way, because fuel efficiency is calculated based on how close you are to your service ceiling, and the lower you are, the more fuel efficient you are. So the lower your service ceiling is, the faster you can reach it, and therefore hit the max fuel efficiency. And a high range of 280 kilometers, which can be 2.5x while flying at service ceiling. You're also going to notice that it is quite frankly a steal at a mere 17,000 WP. In exchange for your investment, you get this military cargo plane that can fly from lesser known airports with high supply and demand, take special cargo jobs, and execute high altitude supply drops for money. If you're looking to get better planes as soon as possible, and you just got out of jet engine training with not much WP left over, this is going to be a great purchase, it has a lot of WP making potential, and at only 17,000 WP, it's not going to hurt your wallet that much. I think you can actually make the WP you spent back in a single supply drop mission if you get good luck, which is really, really nice. But if you're not a big fan of supply drops or cargo aircraft in general, try the Bombardier Global 7500. This is actually a pretty neat aircraft. It's basically a thick version of the Gulfstream G650ER and is marginally more expensive. Looking at the stats, you're going to notice that it is utterly insane compared to some of the other choices that you might have been considering. 615 knots of speed, 515 kilometers of range on this small tiny plane. What is this? And why am I paying 18,000 WP for something with only 14 capacity? Well, this is a plane type that you may not have realized exists until now. This is a private jet, and private jets can take corporate transport flights, which pay way more than charter. Which means that this plane makes roughly equal the money to another plane around double its capacity. On top of that, the 14 capacity allows it to use a really fun mechanic called supply and demand. By flying into really small airports, you can increase the earnings of your job based on the supply and demand multiplier, which is changed based on how many jobs taken at a certain airport. Usually, the smaller the airport is, the higher the supply and demand will be because less people fly there. By flying this jet between small airports and taking corporate transport jobs between them, you can make mad money, and its 500 km range makes job chaining a relatively painless task. There is also the option of the G650ER, which is mostly the same, but it has a bit less range and a higher service ceiling, 
but it is 2,000 WP cheaper. But what if you got some WP to throw around because while these two planes are pretty good for people who just want to rush SST as quickly as possible and save a lot of money while doing it, maybe you can't prepare to buy a good jet. What should you buy? If that sounds like you, I would like to present the humble Martin P6M-2 Seamaster. This is a seaplane with jet engines and was designed to carry thermonuclear weapons in real life. At a whopping 28,000 WP, this plane's stats do not look impressive until you actually try it. Thankfully, I tried it, so you all will be informed. This plane flies at 596 knots and has an afterburner, which means it can vertically climb while gaining speed to its service ceiling of 15 kilometers, despite supposedly having a thrust to weight ratio of 0.3 according to Wikipedia. Because this plane can rocket instantly up to its service ceiling, it means it can actually cover 450 kilometers of distance despite its paper range of 193 kilometers. It makes more money than planes of similar price points because of the specialty jobs it has access to and it can fly into high supply and demand airports because of its low capacity. The problem with it are that it's hard to do job chaining because it has almost no range at sea level, and this is indeed a seaplane, so you're gonna have to be careful with landing and finding fuel at the seaport. Finally, you're gonna have to vertically climb to save fuel, but on the other hand, it has speed brakes, which save a lot of time while descending. Generally, it's a great choice if you have the money saved up already. Flying from A to B is great and all, but let's take a look at some beginner jet engines that also make good money, but no thanks to the traditional transport jobs. Okay, so to start, we have the F-15 Charlie Eagle. It costs at like 15,000 WP from the market because it's so common. Buy one, run PTS with it, you're gonna make bank with it, it's, it makes roughly the same amount as the XB-70. And this is because the Eagle is just very maneuverable, and you can do individual drops much faster than the XB-70. Which makes up for the lost time ditching the plane and restarting the thing. The only downside is that you're gonna have to be good at PTS, otherwise you may begin to lose money by crashing. And it only comes with 3 drops. Next, there is the Lockheed C-141 Starlifter. It's a pretty nice transport for 22,000. You can do high altitude drops with it, and it comes with 4 drops per job. It's a pretty decent plane overall, you can get 28,000 per job. If you get lucky with the job spawns, which is usually pretty good, I want to say, and each job takes anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes, so you're looking at close to 1,000 WP per minute. Then there is the MyZChef M55 Mystic. For a mere 10,000, you get a plane that does 750 WP per minute from recon jobs. Pretty good I would say, but the maintenance is quite expensive and will take a chunk out of your income. This is probably going to be the best recon plane you're going to get on the cheap. Everything else is like 30,000 WP, but they do make your life much easier with higher ranges, especially the U2, which may be an option that you might want to look into if you have some WP left over from jet training. Jets are cool, but if you really want to stick with multi-engines, maybe you should take a look at the A400 and the Tupolev 114. Both planes are really competitive against jets of similar price and similar roles, and you're basically looking at the same bang for the buck compared to jet engines. So maybe save on training for jets immediately, and this may be a better idea for progression if you want to have more money later on. Anyways, I hope I've given you all some good food for thought. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe. Also, let me know what your first jet is going to be or was. I'm very interested, and it also helps this video get recommended on the YouTube recommendation system. Anyways, I'll see you all next time. Have a nice day.